per minute, um, I'm going to invite somebody up here in a second. I wanted to share with you, um, if you've been here for more than five minutes, you know that testimony is an important thing in this house. And uh, I wanted to share with you a passage from Revelation 12. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. And then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, it has happened at last, the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser has been thrown down to the earth, the one who accused our brothers and sisters before God day and night. And they have defeated him because of the blood of the lamb and because of their testimony. And I don't know, you know, a lot of times if you hear an invitation to share testimony, we go, <sighs> But you guys, it's like here is the thing that threw the enemy down, the thing that defeats the enemy, the thing that silences our accuser is the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. That's a big deal. And so um, my, I'm inviting Isabella, my brave friend. Did we get a stool? Steve brought a stool. <laughs> um, Isabella is like like an honorary daughter. I love this, this girl so much. And um, I've known her since she was younger, but recently started getting involved in young adults ministry. And uh, she just got back from a trip she's going to tell you about. And um, as I was listening to her, I actually just sat and cried through most of the lunch. Um, as she's sharing with me what God was teaching her. And I just said, would you share this? I think people need to know uh, your story and to need, need to hear your testimony. And so um, she's been really brave this morning. This is not something she likes to do. <laughs> um, but I know she's safe with you, so <laughs> you can sit on the stool if you want. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, so I'll start us off by saying it's been a rough couple of days, so I'm definitely not sitting in like a place that I would like to share in the testimony, but... Um, I know that he has, like, through this time, he has left uh, a healing, with his healing touch, he's left a mark on my heart that's very safe, and, um, uh, and to kind of come back to you to sit in, like, the glory of what he has done, and so I went on a two and a half month trip um, to kind of partner with him and engage with him. I didn't know what it would look like, I had no expectations, I just... Um, I knew I needed a place after a rough couple of months, a uh, couple years actually. Um, I needed a time to just let my head kind of decompress and like just level out and filter, kind of go through the filtering process, but uh, in his name and through his word. And so I needed to step away. And with the help of my community, uh, things kind of lined up um, very nicely for that. And so I have family in Italy, which I uh, stayed with and I break the trip up in about like two parts the first part was about like a month and a half and it was just a lot of rest it was a lot of physical rest that I wasn't expecting very slow my head was pretty foggy and uh, the water was pretty quiet but it was a time where like I learned what obedience and discipline was and not in the name of um, like a task to check off but that it's something that um that I was able to kind of engage with him in that secret place and understand what that secret place is and how even if I wasn't, uh, even if I didn't feel present for it or I didn't even understand what I was reading when I opened up the Bible, I just kind of prayed over it that even though my head isn't receiving it, I know that my heart is. Um, and so through that time, uh, there was also just like, with that, uh, kind of just the pressure and, and shame of if I need to go out and find him, is he here, um, am I doing enough kind of thing, but it was, it was kind of odd because my, I felt very, um, like he, he gave me that nudge, he gave me just that kind of, uh, invitation of like, no, just rest, I literally don't want you to do anything, I don't want you to think, uh, especially, and just, just sit. Uh, and so then my friend Maddie Roberts came and she was kind of the bridge between the two parts and I think things came up to the surface in that time because I think it was like two, uh, two lives kind of meeting. And, uh, and so when she left, it was kind of the 
part two concept, and I, um, there was kind of, there was a shift in clarity that happened in my head, and just that like, okay, it's time to kind of put things in motion, like let's fight these habits, let's, let's get after this, and it was really hard, it was, it was like I was waking up every day to kind of nothing in my day other than just being in my thoughts and having to fight my thoughts and my patterns and bad habits and um, coming to him and asking, asking for these things to be taken away. And, and so, um, and it was day after day. And I think through that time, I um, kind of, there was clarity on understanding what healing is, um, especially like at the beginning of the trip, I'd say, I didn't understand, um, also especially let his healing in, uh, but kind of come the end, I, I, I understood it. I understood what it looked like also personally for me and kind of the different ways that he engages in it. And so with that, and then also um, I was reading the book Soul Care throughout the, the two and a half months pretty gradually. And with the help of that book, I uh, brought, brought to my attention that I have a pride problem, a pretty heavy pride problem. And, and with that, it it first it edges and creeps in in every every little way that you can you can't even think of, but it pops in there and and it partners with my control, and where my control is is definitely where I have that wall up against the Lord that there are only certain things that I'll relinquish to Him that like I'll let Him touch and then everything else like I need to have my hand on, and I always with the control I always had kind of this visual that it was a brick wall. It was just another another brick piling on over and over again, but he kind of uh, shifted uh, that visual for me and brought to my attention that it's, it's a rose bush and it's just a rose bush of a wall and that's why I, I am so deceived at times because it's beautiful and I want it. And But seasons change and the roses die and, and there I see that it is it is a wall of thorns and and what I am holding, and so, and then in that moment, the Lord also just invited me to, um, uh, to that he wants to hold it, he wants to carry the wall, and you know, he, he wears a crown of thorns, and so um, I, through that invitation, it wasn't, it wasn't something I said like yes to immediately, but just kind of acknowledged that, that he is that safe place, and so with that, and the secret place, um, and just sitting in discipline and obedience, um, all these words and encouragement and, and, and things that I've heard all my life, um, I think I just received them and I just kind of, I kind of let them come in and out. But um, uh, but I'd say understanding the secret place and meeting the Lord there and finding safety there, there. Um, I, I had a place for these words to sit. And so um, like one of them being, uh, against my pride, I once it kind of revs up, or there are moments where it hit its peak. I I go against it with a statement of that my value is settled at the cross. And before it was just it's it's just a sentence, but like I I'm welcoming it now. Like I'm not just letting it in. I'm giving it a place to sit and a place to rest, um, and with no pressure either, with nothing that I have to like hear it and dissect it and. Um, hold it intensely. I'm, I'm actually letting it go and letting it rest in that place where the Lord is present in. Um, mm-hmm. um, and then along with the, with this, recognizing that my pride is a spiritual problem and how how it is um, integrated in all these different different places. That I always thought. My mental health is like 80% mental mental health and challenges and 20% spiritual. But um, kind of through through the work of those two and a half months, I, I walked away recognizing like it's flipped. It's 80% spiritual and 20% mental. And my, the mental is still very much there, but I was treating uh, the, the dominant issues of spirituality that uh, with worldly solutions. And so you know, when I, I get revved up because I wasn't giving myself what I needed. Um, and so with the healing, like I feel uh, kind of after the trip, I have been playing with the idea, like, am I healed? I was feeling a lot better. My head was just a lot more stable. Uh, but I, I kind of came to the conclusion that, like, I don't think it was, ta- it was necessarily taken away. Like, it's still very present. But um, the way that he healed was that he, he, like, healing was giving me peace in the unrest. And... Um, 
he kind of opened up a new toolbox of, of different ways of healing and managing my head and my emotions. Uh, and so like, I do believe I was, I was healed in some form and then it just, it, it wasn't, um, it wasn't in, in the purpose of trying to get to like from A to B of that this needs to be taken away, but that like I have peace that the way that he has healed me is enough and that like um, partnering with him uh, there is comfort and safety within that and with the, se uh, the, the secret place and like his healing touch that those are those are places of healing that I can fre frequently come back to um, for comfort and to re-experience that healing and safety. Um, mm, I think that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite finale yet. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I would like to pray for you. Um, and would, why don't we all stand? Um, you can reach your hands towards Isabella. If there are a few people that want to come up and just lay hands on her and bless her sister here. Um, hmm. Jesus, I just thank you for Isabella's life, for the testimony that she is living out, for her honesty, um, for her vulnerability. And we just speak blessing over that, Father. Multiply her testimony. Multiply that in this room. Even in this room today, those who might be struggling with anxiety or feeling stuck in thought patterns that they just cannot get out of. God, we just speak release over those things that we have faith that what you've begun in Isabella, you're actually wanting to do throughout this room today. I just bless her testimony that it would go out and release healing in this place, that God, you love every person in here, that you see every person, that you long for each of us to make space for you like Isabella did. And so I just pray, God, that um, you would continue to build into Isabella a giant space for you, that when she comes to you, she would meet you, that she would hear your voice and know how deeply she is loved. And we all ask for that too, God. We come and say thanks for this testimony today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. All right, let's worship together.